What's up guys, it's Bromley from Empire Barbell, and today I'm gonna go over beginner barbell squat technique. Now when I'm teaching beginners how to squat, we usually default to a high bar narrow stance setup. The reason being is that it's a little easier to learn, and it's also a little more advantageous because it's a more athletic squat. By staying upright, it requires a little more mobility from the knees, ankles, and hips, and there tends to be a little more stress uh, placed on the quad because there's a little more knee flexion. So it's usually a good counter to the deadlift where the deadlift will work your posterior, your mid low back, your glutes, your hamstrings. A good squat setup should involve some development in your quads and a high bar narrow stance setup is going to be a bit better for that. Even those of you that want to default down the road to a low bar or a wide stance squat, for some of you that have longer legs, for some of you that want to transition into powerlifting, that's a more specific squat. And I recommend saving that for down the road when your goals get more specific to that sport. The best squatting tips I can give to a beginner are to start out light and to focus on technique. You wanna be able to perform thousands of repetitions in your preparation, so by the time that the weight gets heavy, you don't have to second guess your setup. Focus on developmental exercises, grow some muscle, get comfortable in weak positions. Then after a period of time, as you go through a true blue strength phase, you're gonna find that you have a lot more confidence and you get a lot more out of those cycles. So we're going to cover the ins and outs of squatting in five steps. We're going to go over foot placement, knee and hip position, posture embracing, hand and bar placement, and then finally the fifth step we're going to put it all together. And in no time you're going to be moving a lot more weight and you're not going to have to second guess your setup. You want to find a foot position that's not too narrow or not too wide. When it's too narrow, it's going to feel pretty crowded, whereas when it's wide, you're going to have a lateral slant with your knee inside your foot. Neither one of those is optimal. You want to find a stance that's about shoulder width, maybe even a little wider than shoulder width with your toes pointed out a little bit. Once you do that, you want to pay attention to how your foot is distributing the load. If your arches collapse, the weight is going to roll to the inside of your foot, which destabilizes your position. That's not optimal. You want to roll the weight to the outside of your foot. It's going to bring your knees out to the side. It's going to create tension in your glutes, and it's going to create a more stable foundation. So remember, weight to the outside of the foot, knees out. Initiate the squat by breaking back at the hips first and then running your knees out to the side and then forward over your toes. Notice how the knees are going to go a bit over the toes. There's a big myth that the knees should stay behind the toes and that is not correct in a narrow stance upright squat. Hips back, knees out to the side, then forward over the toes. Those with poor ankle mobility, long femurs, or both might have trouble with their heels coming up off the ground or find themselves ending up in a more bent over position. I have a plate and 12 screws on my ankle, which makes it hard to keep my heel down. For this reason, I squat with plates under my heels or Olympic lifting shoes. An elevated heel causes the knee to track forward a little more easily, which allows the hips to stay forward and underneath you. This lends itself to an upright squat position. Proper posture and bracing is huge if you want to squat safely and efficiently. You should always begin a squat with everything lined up in a straight line, with your knees back, your hips tucked, and your ribs down. Starting in a straight line by flexing your quads, squeezing your glutes, and squeezing your abs as if you're about to get punched in the stomach ensures that your spine stays rigid. Once braced, break at the hips in a true hinge, moving at the hip joint and not the spine, and allowing your hips to come down in between the space created by your knees. Collapsing is a problem that occurs when lifters drop too low and lose the integrity throughout their hips and their spine. As you move into the bottom of a squat, you should get tighter, not looser. Don't allow yourself to collapse at the bottom of a squat. A really good way to move less weight and to increase the likelihood of injuring yourself while doing so is to start your squat in an overarched position. Notice how when I start my squat in this arched position, there's a substantial amount of movement in my spine as I drop into the bottom. This also stretches the hamstrings and glutes, putting me in a less optimal position at the bottom. Proper spinal alignment occurs when the glutes are tight, which tuck the hips down, and the abdominals are pulled in, which bring the ribs down. This braces the spine in a neutral position, which ensures that you're going to be able to handle more weight and do so safely. The goal of proper hand placement is going to be to secure the bar to your shoulders, as well as creating tension through your upper back to support heavier loads safely and more efficiently. Start out the squat by pulling the muscles of your upper back together. 
The goal here is to try and crowd the muscles of your traps and your rear delts to create a shelf on which the bar is going to rest. Once you walk the bar out, pull your elbows down and in to tense the muscles of your lats and rhomboids. This is going to help stabilize your spine and ensure that the bar stays glued to your rear delts. As far as your hand placement goes, a closer setup is going to be a tighter setup, but you're going to be limited by how flexible your shoulders are. Instead of breaking yourself trying to get your hands as close in as possible, just grab as narrowly as you can while still wrapping your thumbs around the bar and not causing excessive pain or tension through your elbows or shoulders. Now you want to take everything you've learned and actually apply it to a barbell. I start the squat by grabbing right outside of the rings with my thumbs wrapped around the bar. Notice I'm wearing wrist straps. That makes it a little easier for my wrist to break back, which allows me to keep my elbows down and under the bar. I squeeze my traps together, positioning the bar on the shelf created by my rear delts, and I pull the elbows down and in to create tension throughout my lats. I take my feet about shoulder width apart. I start by squeezing my quads, glutes, and abdominals, and then once I'm braced, I push my hips back and then drop them straight down as my knees run forward and out to the side. You want to practice these cues every chance you get. Every warm-up set, every working set, run through it the exact same way until you're a machine. Before long, you'll be moving heavier loads safely and efficiently.